This is John Tianjun from Tongyuan Software and Control. Today, my topic is about a project that aims to conduct an excavator simulation with simple digital twin implementation with a real controller through CAN network communication. Here is a list of my presentation contents. First, I'll introduce the background and the target of the development to simply explain the need that it requires to conduct such a simulation system. Then I'll focus on the simulation model building procedure as well as the optimization procedure to demonstrate how to build an excavator simulation system as well as optimize it to improve its efficiency during real-time simulation. Then I'll address on the communication mechanism by introducing the external C function and to apply it to communicate with the CAD network. Finally, the system integration and the real-time implementation are introduced to uh, demonstrate the final appearance of the whole system during real-time uh, simulation. The background of the project is that the excavator controller development requires the validating effort to be minimized and to be initialized as early as possible. The traditional approach which requires lots of field tests are not easy to implement. To achieve the goal, a simple hill approach must be started to enable the real controller to verify the strategy and integrity in the real-time environment. So the target of the project is then to achieve co-simulation between the excavator system model and the communication network. The whole system can be divided into several subsystems. The hydraulic pump contains two volumetric flow sources, which takes in the displacement and the speak signal to produce a certain level of oil flow rate. They will drive the control valve subsystem to actuate four cylinders and to push or pull the cylinder piston and drive the mechanical parts. The pump and the valves are originated from a customized hydraulic library, and the mechanical parts are from the Modelica multi-body library. The communication blocks on the two sides are customized and will work as I.O. interface between the system model and the real controller. Together, the excavator system library can be established. From the bottom up, the hydraulic subcomponents are constructed from basic ones, such as the orifice flow valve, the hydraulic volume, the hydraulic valve, and the volumetric flow source components. The directional valves work as the main components of the subsystem and are constructed from orifice flow and valve characteristic curves. The input signal will vary the orifice diameter and switch them on and off, representing different positions of a directional valve. And integrating with other auxiliaries, they will form the hydraulic subsystem. The mechanical parts are constructed by four rigid bodies using basic components from the Modelica multi-body library. The base is the structure supporting the whole mechanism. The boom, the arm, and the bucket together create a multi-body linkage that will do dynamic and kinematic calculations based on the mass and the inertia in tensor inputs. The CAD models are inserted for rendering purpose so that it can visualize the movement as well as the variable curves. With the translational mechanical ports connected, 
the actuating forces from the cylinders are applied to line force components to drive the joints to rotate and give relative angle feedbacks to the transmitting model. In order for the simulation to achieve real-time speed, optimization is needed here. And the original reduced equation system contains a significant size of nonlinear system equations due to unproper selection of state variable priority. So readjusting the state select priority of the key components, here we have the three joints of the mechanical parts, and this helps the analysis of the symbolic system to avoid generating unnecessary nonlinear equations. One major work of the project is to achieve a hill test environment through the communication with the real can network. What is used here is to utilize the C libraries and the interfaces of the CAM protocol, which are compiled and verified first. The Modelica interface calls the function and rearrange them into Modelica functions, and then creating a partial interface model within the Modelica environment. In real-time simulation, the messages of each node here are shared through the entire network following a predefined mapping rule. The development of the network protocol is not included here since we want to focus on the application of communication interfaces. The system model is connected to the network through an adapter as a node within the network. So the major work to do in the project was to utilize a predefined CAM protocol, which includes a C header file and library files to call the particular device on the network to receive and transmit data frames. Two major functions like the transmit and receive functions and other device manipulating functions are used here. The frame structure, like other CAM protocols, contains the key features for data parsing, such as the ID and the data, respectively. These features must be treated according to the mapping rules to locate the signal bytes on a given data frame, and this will be handled in the next slide. Directly using the original function only moves a certain number of frames from the device. To filter the frames and collect what the models are needed, the function is modified and combined with the data parsing loop. The original function collects as much frames as possible in every single call first, and then leave the for loop to pick the desired frame according to its ID. And since the number system is different between CAN network and Modelica, a number conversion is added here. So the final function outputs a data array in the Modelica environment and will be repacked into signal interfaces. And for transmitting, the function procedure goes other way around. The feedback signals are converted in the Modelica model first and then transmitted by external function to the network. For the system integration process, the signals are then packed into communication blocks and are connected with the excavator system model. For the model to co-simulate with the CAN adapter device, Fixed step algorithm must be applied here. Here we have tried ArchiFix4 and other fixed step algorithms to test the system robustness. To reach a stable result, adjusting the algorithm setting is necessary for different platforms. By setting the real-time simulation slowdown factor 
the model will run in accordance to the system clock frequency and adjusting the integrator number together with the interval length helps to balance the performance and precision of the model. The final appearance of the system works like this. The adapter and the controller works on the same CAN network and the virtual system is exchanging data with the real controller. The mechanical parts are driven by real signals and sending feedbacks at the same frequency with the network. The whole system works as a simple digital twin application. To conclude, we have successfully modeled the excavator system multidisciplinary model and optimize it for efficiency improvement. Also, we modeled the CAN communication mechanism and integrated with the system model. Finally, the application of digital twin is achieved and conducted under real-time environment. For the possible improvements, the digital twin application could be extended to more complex scenario such as strategy verification and monitoring the working status of the real product through a digital twin model. And the parsing process could be automated and integrated into a toolbox for better user experience. Thanks, and that's all my presentation. Please feel free to ask any questions.